good morning everyone good morning from dublin and good evening to india firstly on behalf of the ambassador of uh, india his excellency akhilesh mishra ji and the embassy of india in dublin i welcome all of you uh, those who joined by online and who have joined in person for, for today's event in respect of the state of karnataka under missions initiative of monthly state commercial event series prior to this we have conducted similar events in respect of the indian states of madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh today we will focus on the trade investment business and tourism opportunities of the state of karnataka we are joined by senior officers from the state government of karnataka who will give a presentation covering the trade investment business and tourism prospects of the state of karnataka from ireland we are joined with joined by representatives from various chambers of commerce including drogeda chamber of commerce and kilkenny chamber of commerce and business entities of ireland and also there are other relevant stakeholders both from india and ireland who have joined us today now may I request the ambassador of india to ireland his excellency akhilesh mishra ji to give away his introductory remarks on the topic Namaskar. My very warm greetings to my friends uh, from Karnataka who have joined this program, uh, and also all other friends from uh, India and Ireland uh, who are participating uh, in this program. Uh, at the outset, I must thank uh, my colleagues in the government of Karnataka for uh, accepting our invitation to join this program. Uh, as uh, you might know, that uh, India and Ireland have uh, traditionally enjoyed extremely close. friendship uh, and also in the contemporary times we have extremely vibrant uh, people to people connect uh, the indian community in ireland is expected to be the most dynamic most vibrant and also most uh, uh, professionally competent qualified uh, the number is around 80000 and it's growing very impressively the number of indian students uh, is the highest international uh, students in the irish universities So it's a very strong people to people connect. Uh, in terms of uh, taking our relationship to the next level, we we feel that there is need for more grounded uh, connectivity between different states of India and counties uh, of Ireland. And in that context, uh, thanks to uh, my very dynamic colleagues in the embassy, uh, we have started a kind of hybrid mode, primarily virtual mode. uh biasala meet and also road shows of different state governments uh, the idea is that uh, the uh, every state uh, will make presentation about the contemporary situation and also based on the business opportunity then based on that uh, we in the embassy will identify together with the uh, state governments uh, niche areas for us to focus and also disseminate information as widely as possible through social media so that with minimal cost people in ireland has made aware of exciting developments that are happening in different state uh, states of india and also new opportunities that are being created for cre- leveraging the synergy between indian and irish economies uh, uh, i as india as ambassador i see very exciting significant potential uh, for example ireland is uh, a very major tech hub Uh, it, starting from a agrarian based society economy it has transformed itself into knowledge driven cutting edge technology developer uh 8 out of top 10 it companies 13 out of 15 uh, pharma and medtech companies uh, medical devices agritech fintech aviation a lot of multinational companies have made ireland as their global headquarters or European headquarters. Uh, similarly, India has very large cluster of multinationals. Uh, uh, also, in startup sector, uh, India is now the third largest cluster of startups and also the third largest number of unicorns in the world. Ireland also has a smaller number, but extremely vibrant uh, ecosystem of uh, creativity, and innovation, and entrepreneurship and uh, startup uh, growth. so i see education tertiary education professional education is also another area where i see a lot of opportunity for area uh, ireland karnatak connect uh, at the at the out, uh, once again i must sincerely thank uh, my friends in uh, 
the government of Karnataka for their presentation. I'm looking forward to uh, learning more. Uh, and based on that, we'll identify action points and uh, uh, the further points of connect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I now request uh, Ms. Janvi Bansal, Consultant, Ministry of Industry and Commerce of State Government of uh, Karnataka, uh, to give away her presentation. And also, um, uh, we are joined with uh, Ms. Ganjan uh, Krishna, uh, Senior IAS Officer from State Government of Karnataka. She will join shortly. Uh, yes, please. The floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think this is a great initiative where uh, you're having monthly uh, seminars with different states. So this will help identify opportunities uh, where we can col collaborate and uh, take investments forward. So there is a brief presentation which government of Karnataka would like to make and I will just share the screen. So I'll be starting with a very uh, quick and crisp uh, macroeconomic snapshot of Karnataka as a state. So Karnataka is a state having a GSDP of 270 billion and it has been growing at a CAGR of around 12.4% for the last 10 years. To give a context, so India as a country has been growing at uh, around 6-7% to and Karnataka is at 12.4%. This is majorly driven by the FDIs which are coming into the state from different countries. Uh, Karnataka has been ranked among the top three uh, states uh, attracting the FDIs for the last five years. Uh, so and so forth that in, F uh, in FY 2022, we were the state attracting 38% of the FDIs which came into India. Other than that, Karnataka has always been the number one in innovation, which is clearly seen by uh, it being the first in India Innovation Index. And it has the highest number of R&D centers in uh, India. So 35% of the GICs have a uh, presence in Karnataka. Also 400 of the uh, Fortune 500 companies have presence in Karnataka. And all this is driven by the ease of doing uh, business in Karnataka, which we are constantly uh, evolving with time. And also the uh, leads ranking, which is the logistics uh, ease across different states. So Karnataka is a leader across all this. Now coming to sectors, which uh, could be of potential interest. I'll start with the electronics or the uh, yeah. I'll start with the electronics or the semiconductor. Semiconductor as a space uh, has been uh, coming into a lot of uh, importance in the recent days. So Karnataka has forty percent share in the electronics design in India, and also it has home to eighty five plus fabulous uh, chip design companies, and it contributes to ten percent of the uh, gross national output in the electronics sector. Uh, you would have recently heard that Foxconn, a big player, has uh, put some 3 billion investment in Karnataka and it is setting up a largest facility which would manufacture 20 million uh, iPhones in the state. So they have taken 300 acres land of that. Not only the uh, assembly of iPhones, it is across the entire value chain uh, in semiconductor where Karnataka is focusing on. Be it uh, chip designs, for example, we have... Uh, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, and all those major players are present over there. Then EDA tools. And also Karnataka is in active conversations with OSAT players also to come and set up base in Karnataka. So semiconductor is something which we are really, really looking forward to. And the incentives in the sector which the government offers is one of the best in class. Players can get around 30 to 40% of their uh, investments as subsidies from the state. The next major sector is the electric vehicle. Now here, Karnataka was the first state to launch a policy in 2017, when this was in very nascent stage. So we were the first state to come up with this policy. And we have till now attracted around 5 billion investments across uh, power electronics, motors, OEMs, testing infra, charging infra. So across the entire value chain, we have attracted major investments. For example, Excite, which is setting up its first Giga factory uh, in India, that is in Karnataka, in Bangalore. So that is a 12 gigawatt factory which is being set up. Uh, and that is the first of its kind in India. Uh, not only that, we are also coming up with an updated clean mobility policy because we do not want to restrict ourselves to only electric vehicles. In future, whatever technology is going to come, we have we are already covering it in our policy. Be it, uh, let's say, be it strong hybrid so that the transition is smoother or be it hydrogen, so all those new uh, technologies will be covered under this policy. 
then machine tools which is a very critical uh, critical industry for all these electronics evs aerospace and defense that also has a 52% share in karnataka there is a separate machine tool park which is there in tumkuru and uh, karnataka is actively working to ensure that all these suppliers of uh, all these big companies come to karnataka moving forward to aerospace and defense in this sector there is a 65% share of the uh, aircraft manufacturing for defense which happens in karnataka uh, apart from that in aerospace and defense we have all the major players like airbus boeing but apart from that the suppliers like the tier 1 suppliers or tier 2 suppliers they have a base in karnataka that tells how uh, conducive the ecosystem in general is so uh, just to put some numbers to that 70% of the total supplier base of aerospace and defense in india has place in the state so that tells the intensity of how uh, conducive the environment is there then coming to uh, r&d uh, we are already well known uh, for the r&d centers uh, across india and uh, for example google uh, outside of us it has put its largest center here in bangalore so that is focusing on ai ml all future uh, technologies that center is focusing on other than that uh, for example texas instruments in 1986 it was the first one to come to the state and this is the largest uh, second largest biggest uh, r&d facility of uh, texas instruments globally so that just uh, shows the confidence which uh, all these major players are putting in karnataka because of the talent pool which is there uh, that could be because of the number of like 234 universities which we have the colleges which are there or the uh, initiatives which the government is taking on the skilling side so that just gives the magnitude of uh, skilling innovation which we have in the state moving forward to biotech medtech so 60% of the total uh, exports from india they happen from uh, our state other than that we are also heavily focusing on uh, this healthcare sector uh recently uh, honorable minister for industries and commerce has announced an initiative that we karnataka is going to come up with a knowledge healthcare innovation and research city which will be spread across some 2000 acres around 60 kilometers from uh, bangalore because the entire talent uh, is present here so that initiative which will materialize mostly in next 2 to 3 years we'll see an influx of major hospital chains coming here universities coming here research which is happening so everything from different parts coming together would be in that city so that is something a major boost to uh, biotech medtech manufacturing pharma vaccines and all which we are looking at exports we are already uh, known as the silicon valley so not going there 40% of it exports uh, is in karnataka and other than that an important factor in terms of the renewable energy so 63% of our installed capacity is in renewables so be it uh, wind solar uh, water so all that karnataka is leading in the renewable space also and we have a target that by around 2030 20 2035 uh, we will try to reach 100% of the uh, installed capacity that could be uh, either through pump storage which we are actively pursuing or the green hydrogen so there are multiple initiatives which uh, the government has in pipeline and is actively pursuing to uh, to take the state on a uh, global stage and you know be uh, future ready now some of the potential opportunities which uh, which was also mentioned was like in pharma i will cover it subsequently but in pharma uh, so we have 300 350 plus uh, medtech companies here and uh, other than that the policy which we are giving for this uh, medical device manufacturing is the esdm policy where again you get 25% capital subsidy and 1% pli this this uh, this compared to the peers in other states is the best and uh, so this is in terms of the incentives but for the ecosystem in general for example in mysuru we have allocated 100 acres of land uh, just for this medtech park where we have already players and if some interest comes mysuru has abundant water supply it has a good uh, social life for expats so that is the place to be for uh, pharma and medtech then in agri and food processing uh, 60% of the india's coffee production happens in uh, the state and other than that uh, karnataka is also like for example karnataka is uh, right now focusing on cluster based approach so for each uh, 
district in Karnataka, we are identifying what are the strengths of that and trying to develop clusters accordingly. So for food processing, North, Karna uh, North Karnataka is very favorable. And in Bijapur, we are identifying a 75 acre parcel, which will uh, cater to the entire uh, food value chain. So any company coming there can uh, leverage synergies and set up base over there. Other than that, there is already in existence in Dharwad, which is also in North Karnataka, an FMCG park. So there, uh, to promote industries to come to those areas, there are additional financial incentives which are given by the government. So for example, uh, in Dharwad, you can get around 25% capital subsidy and also a 3% turnover-based subsidy. So these are the ad additional incentives which the state gives to promote such clusters. And then uh, R&D, I have already touched upon. And tourism, uh, Karnataka, uh, tourism and hospitality. I think Karnataka, again, here is the leader. We have multiple UNESCO heritage sites there. Uh, we have best uh, world-class golf uh, courses, which are their resorts. And we have been uh, ranked the most dynamic city uh, in, the, in the country. Uh, and apart from that, we have 40 plus five-star hotels, sport clubs, wildlife resorts. Uh, other than that, the main factor which Karnataka has the pleasant weather. So all this makes it very, very conducive for all the expats to come and uh, work in Karnataka. Now, these are some of the details about the medical devices and how, what are the opportunities. So I have already touched upon that. So I will just uh, move forward. So for example, in pharma, uh, if you see, there is around 6,000 acres of land across the length and breadth of the state. So be it Yadgir, be it Bidar, so I will just move my mouse also. So for example, in Bangalore, in Kolar area, we have the presence of all these major players, right from GSK, Sipla, Biocon, in Mysuru, the medical device park, which I was talking about, we already have Jubilant, Scandray, Solaria. So if you see anywhere the uh, any investor comes with their requirements, so we have identified land passes, which could be suitable for them. And the government handles them for any, any uh, support which is required. In R&D center, uh, I had mentioned about the uh, IT, uh, Google. But in terms of pharma, if you see uh, all these uh, major players like GE, Siemens, Biocon, they also have presence and set up their R&D units in Bangalore specifically. For R&D, the state has uh, multiple policies. So one is a dedicated ERD policy. Again, Karnataka was the first one to come up with uh, ERD policy, especially focusing on the innovations which were happening in the space of either be it medtech, semiconductor, or EV. So there's an entire dedicated uh, policy for that. Other than that, in the industry policy, which covers all the sectors, and it gives a turnover-based subsidy of 2.25% for a period of 7 to 10 years. That has a special incentives for R&D. For example, if you are uh, doing some research for some molecule, so you will get some subsidy for that as well. And apart from that, the skilling and the recruitment assistance, because we are promoting uh, the collaboration between the colleges and uh, uh, and the companies, that uh, assistance and recruitment assistance also happens. Uh, then these are the major players in agri and food processing, which have base here, uh, like some of the few names I just uh, mentioned are Nestle, ITC, uh, Britannia, MTR, uh, to name others. And then this was the one I was mentioning in Bijapur. This is upcoming. And if you can see, uh, the 75 acres is available at a very nominal price of 40 to 50 lakhs per acre. And it has all the uh, infrastructure, be it power, water, road, available over there. So that is something which we are uh, looking and inviting players to come and set up base there. Uh, the next is the uh, FMCG cluster in Dharwar. I have already covered the special incentives which we get. So this, if you can see the location, it is over here. Uh, moving forward, so for trade, uh, there is this infrastructure which is required, uh, be it airport, seaport, or the road infrastructure which is there. Now, Karnataka has uh, two international airports. But Bangalore Airport specifically is the biggest one. It handles around 40% of the uh, South India's air cargo. And not only that, for any company coming up and setting base over here, the turnaround time of the uh, cargo is something which is very of uh, crucial uh, KPI. Now, at Bile, you, there, uh, there is a turnaround time of four to six hours where we promise the delivery to, uh, cargo delivery to happen. This four to six hours is the uh, conservative number, but it can go up to two hours also. 
So that is a big plus point of the Bile Airport, which we have. Other than that, we have two ports, one in um, Mangalore and Chennai also is nearby, around 300 kilometers. So accessibility to ports is also there. Uh, above that, in Tumpuru, in this area, we are coming up with ICDs also, which will uh, simp uh, which will help in the uh, in the uh, connectivity to the, to the ports. Other than that, the renewable energy we have already sp uh, spoken about, and then there is this uh, B BCIC corridor, so uh, Bang Bangalore Chennai Industrial Corridor which is this corridor and it runs along the breadth of uh, Karnataka and it uh, so basically either you have to go to Mumbai or uh, Chennai you can easily go from Bangalore uh, Karnataka to be uh, precise uh, then for uh, tourism and hospitality as I mentioned uh, we have best in class uh, golf courses we are consistently ranked amongst the best cities to live in. Uh, there are a lot of international schools, which is also one of the key requirements. And then the popular uh, tourism uh, destinations such as the UNESCO Heritage, uh, which are attracting tourists from across the world. And these are some of the uh, specifics. I will skip this. But if someone is interested, we could uh, discuss about uh, this also in detail. What are the incentives under the industrial policy, which can be applicable for the investors? Next, coming to the ease of doing business. So here also I'll be uh, very uh, short in this. So what happens is if an industry is coming and setting up base in uh, the state, we do not ask you to take all the approvals and then start your construction because we know all these processes can take time. So there is a three-year moratorium period which is now given by the state where you can come, uh, get the basic approvals which you get uh, immediately and then you don't have to coordinate with the multiple departments. You can start with your uh, construction of the site and meanwhile in three years you have that time to get all the approvals in place. So this has really, really solved the ease of doing business in the state and it is again uh, constantly working on further, further improving this process. Then in snapshot, these are the main offerings which uh, we have to provide to make Karnataka as the most in, uh, attractive investment de destination, be it the policy, the land across the length and breadth, which is there, labor uh, availability, uh, universities, colleges, which we have, the connectivity to either uh, east or west, uh, both sides, the connectivity is very good, ease of doing business we are actively working on, and uh, the world-class social infrastructure, which I mentioned. So that is uh, it from the state of Karnataka, and then I'll be happy to take any questions which are there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Janvi, for your uh, uh, very comprehensive presentation covering the investment, trade, business, and tourism opportunities of the state. And uh, now um, we can invite some questions. Uh, maybe we can take some questions now. So, uh, just want to share an observation. Hi, myself, Shubham Chandra. Uh, I am a sales director for Accenture and the focus on the public sector accounts in Ireland. It's, it's, it's more of an observation than a question. Well, see, any investment uh, uh, whether in India, in Karnataka, or of course in Ireland, will of course be driven by mutual need on both mm -hmm. sides. And uh, given that I work very closely with Irish government on, on, on different uh, in different areas of technology enablement and transformation. Uh, Irish government has a very ambitious plan. They call it National Development Plan 2030, where they want to invest about 165 billion in Irish economy. Now, this 165 billion is not essentially targeted towards a few things. It's across the industry, across the entire economy, by ranging from climate, transportation, EV, healthcare, medicals, everything. And they have also recognized that there is a massive amount of shortage of capital goods. They need a lot of capital goods from uh, outside EU to be brought into Ireland so as to basically enable or deliver up to that plan. So I think I clearly see an opportunity there. For of course, and given that, uh, Jani, some of the things that you've discussed about in your presentation, the, the investment that the Karnataka government is making in the sustainability space, EV space, pharma, medtech, I clearly see an opportunity that Ireland's immediate and long-term needs for such capital goods or such expertise can be fulfilled by, of course, the work that is being done in the state of Karnataka. I have more details on it. I mean, of course, we can discuss it, but again, that's one of the observations which I have got to share. And I think uh, uh, I can also, of course, pass on some, some good connection to the government who, of course, uh, who we can connect or reach out to, to basically create that level of salience in terms of what, at a state level, we can do and of course how we can and of course project it out to the wider uh, Indian context as well. So that's one of the observations rather than the question. Okay. Okay. 
right absolutely i i mean we would be uh, more than uh, grateful to have uh, some connects and understand where the investments can come in in healthcare or let's say the ev because as i mentioned there is this khir park which is coming up across 1000 acres and not only that for ev also we have identified parks uh, land parcels let's say in gori bidnur chikballapur which is closer to bangalore and in north karnataka where yeah. we are getting in investments and uh, will be more than happy to assist of course the way it has to work is that of course ireland is in severe shortage of those capital heavy engineering stuff okay and while well, the government is very ambitious about it but still they are dabbling with various options where to get the materials from where to get the raw materials basically the the hardware from i think that mm-hmm. can work exactly that supply chain constraints is yeah. what the government is here dabbling with and because i work mostly in the tech sector tech implementation side i can i can clearly see that gap I think that is something which we can uh, further discuss and uh, uh, have a, a Surely. Much discussion on here. And as Accenture, of course, we do partner with a lot of startups across our ecosystem. So we have a, a very big ecosystem partners in India, where a lot of startups on EV side, medical tech side, all those partners work with us. And of course, we take those offerings forward to our uh, government clients. So that is something which I can certainly enable uh, in the, in the, at, at Irish level. I just have I have one question if that's okay. Um, uh, my name is Suresh. Uh, thanks for the comprehensive presentation. I'm from the Irish Canada, and I'm in Ireland for about 23 years. I yeah. work as a, a global expansion manager uh, for Abbott Medical Diabetes Medical Care. And um, one thing I do want to understand is that looking at the the comprehensive presentation you did, which is great. trying to understand what about for the small scale industries you know a lot of the people students are coming over here as the honorable ambassador mentioned it people are a lot of students are coming over settling here you know they are buying a house and you know working in multinational companies it and number of other segments there are also a lot of people who are actually going back also after their masters qualification so they, i do know that some of the people are going back and setting up a small enterprise and business i just want to understand from your point of view what kind of opportunities are there how they, how they can tap on to i know because they if they are here for two or three years probably they would have lost contact where they wouldn't have known things has changed obviously governments are coming you guys are coming with the new initiatives to you know expand and make the business much easier to work with maybe you can shed some light on you know for the small people who want to go and set up something this is the general people you know students want to go back and set up something i know some people are setting it up in maybe you can shed some light into what karnataka government is doing in that sector to enhance people come and make the business much more easy right so i think these are uh, two aspects like one is like the startups uh, want to come and you know they want to be hand held and the second is what are the incentives which these uh, startups can get so yeah. for example this uh, i cover the latter part the incentives which they can get that is covered in the industry policy so industry policy is not only for uh, large medium or mega industries it's also for micro industries like right from let's say even if you are investing some 5 or 10 lakhs up till 1000 crores whatever you are investing there are some incentives there are different buckets which are made to ensure that everyone is getting some uh, in, in, uh, are getting decent incentives and even in the industry policy they are coming up with this rental subsidy which is there because for small startups when they come uh, they don't have uh, revenue which they are able to generate right so even giving rent for the space in uh, such a, a state like bangalore where the rents are skyrocketing we are giving assistance on that also so that is comprehensively covered in the industry policy which i am talking about the second is the incubators or how can startups you know uh, coordinate with each other or what are the opportunities so there is this ktech innovation hub which is there in karnataka so any startup like they can come and there is an incubation space which they have where they will uh, obviously they will select startups it's not that every startup can go and just uh, join the ktech innovation hub so there is a formal uh, process where you can go and set up in ktech innovation hub and then they will uh, take it forward from there other than that if there is any startup which is looking they can obviously come to government any time and they can uh, you know ask for connects so we can connect them to the industry startups anything that they need Yeah, thank you the just last bit is that that that's a very good uh, when you are sharing these slides obviously i am expecting can you able to add that one additional slide with the couple of bullets you mentioned it what is there for the local uh, for the for the msmes uh, yeah sure 
even in slide i can give you a write up also on msmes and startups how the in general ecosystem in karnataka is there because for startups if you know like uh, karnataka is the hub like bangalore yeah, yeah, is yeah. the startup hub <laughs> of india so yeah. th- 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 uh, there is i will share all the details okay and then we could share that with the wider you know community within the our karnataka commun- you know share with put into the number of uh, areas where people can tap onto it and do, then sorry, they would sorry, know who so they I'll share that note with you uh, start up in msmes what karnataka is doing that's all yeah thank you thank you i have a question ms bansal yeah it's more about uh, like i've worked in varied uh, various engineering industries in karnataka uh, basically from mysore okay but the potential of export like uh, what um, uh, the previous uh, member mentioned here the pro- potential for export from karnataka to ireland mainly the uh, equipments the engineering equipments like generator like mysore kirloskar is one of the famous industry similar to mysore kirloskar there are small scale industries who would require um, qualification to supply uh, products to uh, europe and ireland that is something which is lacking because they need to be um, qualified to supply to europe and ireland which makes them like a very good market for them rather than uh, so focusing on um, a tiny markets within india but it will be a good uh, potential for them to export products to ireland and europe uh got it so uh, mr nagesh i would request if you could share a note with what exactly the requirement is and i could share it further with the btpc department which looks after the all the export related process That's and great. then Thank they you. can yeah uh, if there is any challenge they can just look into it and see how they can simplify that now wh- what i was trying to suggest is it requires more promotion from government of karnataka to make the small scale industries that there is a potential or a huge market in ireland for supplying these products especially the generators because the manufacturing cost of a generator uh from europe to ireland is much higher compared to a manufacturing cost from india and transporting it uh, or selling it in your uh, ireland uh, it becomes a big market for the small scale industries pumps mag, generators various other equipments and all that requires us like uh, state government of karnataka to promote these small scale traders uh, other manufacturers to uh, export it it brings in lots of money back into uh, karnataka right noted so i'll just like highlight that btpc uh, who is the department which takes care of all, all the export so they have uh, you know weekly uh, not weekly monthly connects with these msmes where they uh, have those networking sessions and they have a whole, whole agenda which is there in place i will obviously highlight this point with them that if they can ensure that the uh, this industrial goods can also be exported to ireland i will put the point across noted thank you very much yeah yeah <laughs> thank you janvi for a very excellent uh, overview and uh, uh, giving an insight of uh, what uh, karnataka has to offer uh, for uh, you know s- uh, startups and uh, across various uh, uh, industrial domains and uh, i have a follow up question on uh, what uh, mr suresh uh, raised i am arun kumar i am director of stem college here and a faculty at uh, uh, university college dublin and um, uh i would like to share some of my experience in the in the last 2 uh, 3 years uh in the space of uh, startup uh, specifically for uh, the uh, biotech space and um, uh two or uh, i think 3 years ago uh, there was a big outbreak of uh, lumpy skin disease i am a vet by uh, profession and uh, uh, and there is no treatment for this condition and uh, a, a small startup firm based in bangalore approached us and uh, Uh, for a solution to this and we we developed uh, uh, a uh, a medicinal product uh, for that and uh, uh, what our experience was uh, that uh, with respect to infrastructure uh, absolutely you know what what you raised in in your talk uh, i totally agree with that but the major hurdle as as a uh, biotech firm we were facing was uh, the regulatory approval process which uh, we felt was very slow uh, considerably bureaucratic and uh, as a result uh, uh, it uh, delayed uh, a lot of our efforts and uh, was also uh, was uh, not uh, encouraging uh, to move uh, further with uh, you know much more expansion on on that scale uh, having said that uh, we do have uh, a very promising uh, uh, 
uh, area of uh, what we call as uh, veterinary uh, biotherapeutics uh, for which uh, i am keen in establishing in uh, uh, karnataka because i come from karnataka but unfortunately as i said uh, the regulatory uh, space is is not that encouraging so any insight on uh, uh, you know how uh, that that uh, could be facilitated uh, to encourage uh, uh, academic startups like us uh, to put our foot in karnataka uh yeah sure so i uh, honestly do not uh, think there is any difference between academic startups or any other startup but if a operational challenge or such a regulatory process happened i think it'll be helpful if you can you know bring to notice of the uh, like the officers in charge and they will have a look at it at why uh, that delay happened i mean because as far as you are telling that the regulatory process and the bureaucratic process i mean we are trying to simplify we have a single window system which is there in karnataka so we are doing everything to simplify the process but if due to some reason it gets stuck somewhere it's always a good idea to just you know walk in because uh, gunja ma'am also sits right here she is always available you can come and uh, she'll also look directly into it and try to help you anytime and we can obviously regarding your investment opportunity we can uh, connect offline because as we said we are coming up with a khir uh, city and we would be more than happy to know what are your investment plans and how we can facilitate that absolutely yeah thank you for that i think what will help us is uh, maybe uh, direct contact details uh, uh, from maybe uh, your firm which helps uh, facilitate people like us uh, to put our foot in karnataka because often uh, th- that's a space sometimes it uh, gets jammed as well because of a lot of involvement of uh, middlemen and uh, uh and uh, uh causing a significant delays in what what we want to do no surely i'll share the email id on uh, chat of commissioner industries and commerce department any query which comes to that will be resolved either will be sent to the relevant department or we'll pick it up so stay stay assured of that i'll just share the email id here all right thank you very much yeah um this is talking here um i'm also from bangalore um just re- re- reiterating on statement from suresh sir and uh, arun sir they are my mentors by the way um and uh, one of the questions i had was again on what suresh sir mentioned was i came and i here as a student back in 2015 right i went back to um, bangalore and i started my own company it's a consultation firm for it services and also training for students um one of the main challenges which we faced as a company based in bangalore was when we try to um, ha- have uh, a partnership with universities in uh, in ireland but say there was um, there was a reluctance from colleges and universities in ireland to be associated with training institutes in bangalore or even in india for that matter coming from a city where it has more than 6000 training institutes in, especially in terms of technology um, i'm surprised that uh, you know top colleges or even colleges in general uh, are reluctant to be associated with these training institutes where more than 600 top companies globally are coming in into bangalore to hire people from these institutes right so is there any support from the government or an initiative from the government to uh, enhance these training institutes which is like the training people across different sectors and make make these colleges abroad not necessarily only in our even just in general to see if these training institutes can uh, partner with universities and have a collaboration of micro degrees which is uh, very relevant in us got it uh, so i mean uh, karnataka has like around uh, more than 1700 itis which are there which are the institutional training institutes which uh, train people across the uh, you know across like uh, be it uh, for ev be it for esdm so all these trainings are happening over there i still did not understand why the ireland universities are not uh, willing to come up and partner with bangalore but anything which is there we can obviously work out this embassy of india dublin we are more than happy to you know collaborate and if something is there uh, form an official route uh, through which this partnerships could come in because skilling we understand you know that uh, people are something which we are ha- heavily investing on and if if there is something where you are f- facing bottlenecks i think this platform is very ideal that you come up with some suggestion and we, uh, we will explore that yeah. thank you thank you for that Is there any other questions? 
I think there was a one question on the chat. Probably it would be good to understand. I know the probably it's a very important question for everybody. Flight. We've been talking about this that the direct flight between you know India and uh, Dublin. I don't know whether you have any insight into it. This comes up in every discussion um, whenever Indian community is talking. <laughs> Uh, no, so <laughs> I I wouldn't be able to comment on that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yes, this is one of the most important thing to try. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, improve um, Ireland, Karnataka uh, tourism, and uh, with so many people traveling, uh, having difficulties in traveling from Karnataka to uh, Dublin. So, be the transit visa required in France or Germany. Or traveling, uh, reaching Dublin uh, through or what is that? Uh, UK will yeah. also require a transit visa. This is just uh, becoming so difficult for people like us, uh, bringing our parents, making them travel alone, getting into uh, difficulties planning. Although, how, however advanced you plan, it becomes a difficult task of them transiting. The only other option would be to travel through Middle East. But again, when that is an option, it becomes a disadvantage by itself in terms of price. Okay, so it could uh, like uh, it's not a focus on Bangalore alone, but if uh, Air India could uh, start once a week flight from Bangalore to uh, Dublin, and possibly could also explore once a week from Hyderabad to Dublin, it could just be the use of the same aircraft to travel uh, from Dublin to various cities in India. Got it. Although I won't be able to comment right now, but I'll make sure this point is uh, sent through to Tata so that they can also <laughs> have a look into it. Oh, yes, thank you. thank you very much. And the <laughs> advantage of this is that like uh, tourists from <laughs> India could uh, apply for an Irish visa, travel between Ireland and UK. And it's the same thing. Like There are lots of Irish tourists. I have personally have the uh, have explored the data from Sri Lankan Airlines, Etihad, Emirates, everyone. They all travel from Ireland uh, through these airlines to India. And uh, everyone prefers to go to Goa, Bangalore, Mang uh, Mangalore. So there's a huge potential. So this is something that needs to be uh, supported for us. Just to add, Sorry, there is a feasibility analysis that is being done by uh, uh, Air India at the moment. Uh, ever since, of course, it came in that uh, Tata, Tata companies. So they're doing a feasibility analysis, and of course, Dublin is one of the routes which is being explored at the moment. Yes. Maybe uh, in a year's time, with all the expanded fleet, we may see. Uh, oh, yes, I, I had also written to Air India saying that they could tie up with uh, any uh, US carrier and uh, what is that, uh, making a partner airline so that they could fly passengers from Bangalore to Dublin, and people flying onward to US could do their pre-visa uh, clearance in Dublin, which is a big advantage. And it'll just be a massive boost for travel from Bangalore to India through Dublin. These are the advantages if you want to uh, put forward to Air India. <laughs> Surely. Um, so uh, it was really very engaging uh, presentation from uh, Janavi. Very interesting to know all different facts and uh, all different sectors in more detail. And of course, every all of us know that uh, Bangalore is uh, one of the fastest growing cities with a lot of opportunities to offer um, over the last thirty or forty years. Uh, the the growth has been astounding and has been exemplary as well for all the cities in India. And um, it's good to know that, uh, you know, what Bangalore has been offering. And myself, I uh, have two partnerships at the moment with Bangalore-based companies. Uh, uh, my name is Surya Patra, and uh, I've been running a recruitment agency and IT uh, technology consulting uh, in Ireland. I've been living in Ireland for about 25 years now. So I have a very simple, basic question. Um, like, uh, we all know about the traffic situation in uh, Bangalore. Uh, what are the government initiatives at the moment to improve the traffic situation in Bangalore? So that is a perennial question which comes up whenever the state of Karnataka is presenting, <laughs> I would say. But uh, yes, so uh, Karnataka, I mean, uh, so Mr. D.K. Shiv Kumar, who, uh, who is the vice CM? He is also actively looking at how we can de uh, decongest Karnataka. So there are multiple projects which he is exploring about how it can be done. And if you would have seen recently, also there is some 150 crores of investment, which uh, I think uh, two days back was announced that they are uh, making for the tunnels in uh, Bangalore. 
so yes actively this problem is being looked at this is something which is not uh, now and here i mean it's not that tomorrow the problem will get solved it's a long 5 to 6 years 7 years also uh, the problem could be there but actively the government is working on it and hopefully uh, it it will get bit, ba- better soon so because that is one of the big bottlenecks for for the growth in bangalore in terms of uh, commerce tourism trade or whatever you know right so so uh, only for that if you uh, i'll share the national policy also if required if you see that uh, karnataka is now uh, actively promoting beyond bangalore because you can't be that everyone just keep on coming in bangalore and expects that the congestion is not happening so we are trying to make you know sister cities uh, let's say be it mysuru mangalore uh, close to ba- uh, bangalore but we are trying to spread and go beyond bangalore and we are giving special incentives uh, for companies setting up there so for example uh, for example maruti was the one which set up gurgaon so if an industry comes to a uh, you know a different district then automatically the habitation will come there people will start developing infra everything comes uh, simultaneously so yes thank you mr mansal one quick question which i may have forgot to mention although i mentioned it in the chat it's about the canada communities in northern ireland and ireland uh, we are really restricted with the number of movie screenings the local canada movie screenings okay i don't know what's uh, really stopping in fact uh, the whole of uk mainland enjoys uh, the canada movie screenings uh, although like uh, nothing can be guaranteed that there will be a minimum number of people attending a screening but it is the same sensor certificate which is done for uk and ireland but again when it comes to northern ireland and ireland like the number of movie screenings uh, there's a difference between watching a movie on a movie theater and at home yeah. okay but we don't get to have that first hand experience of uh, uh, movie screenings in of canada movie screenings in ireland and um, northern ireland this so, is something like uh, again from the ministry of culture or whichever relevant ministry uh, it needs to, like it's very difficult to express like when we don't get a chance to watch kgf in canada but we get a chance to watch kgf in tamil okay the originality is from K- K- uh, canada kgf was done in canada but when we get uh, we really get disappointed that the canada originality movie is not screened even once but the other versions uh, in tamil telugu um, uh, hindi are running for more than 3 weeks so i it it is not just one instance it is happening in uh, on multiple things in the last 4 years before covid or during covid we have seen multiple uh, kannada movies which get released in other languages but not in its original we are a small community but again we too need to enjoy and distress ourselves and enjoy the movie in a theater what it so i would uh, request mr murugraj to answer this <laughs> uh there are some uh, distributors here they are operating from the community uh, themselves so maybe uh, as a community association you can approach them and then you can ensure at least minimum ticket so that they can uh, do that already they are into it and then they are releasing many hindi films and then regional um, uh, films also so i i um, i know uh, put you in touch with them so that we will explore this yes that uh, that will be great are... but i have explored with all the uh, uh, community uh, distributors uh, not the big uh, big time distributors but at least the local community distributors but again for some strange reason you don't get the original kannada movies getting released and it just become a last minute notice that the movie is released tomorrow and many of them could not plan it with for the very next day so i think i think uh, i can i can just just clarify some of the things we do i uh, do agree um it's it's very difficult to pre-plan months or weeks in advance uh, what happens is that very short notice you know the the movies would be screened but due to what nagesh mentioned there whether we approval from the film board and you know getting the certificate and things like that but something definitely we can optimize it you know in the long term i i, I do agree but probably yes, unfortunately we're asking because no it it's it's being released on other uh, cities but in northern ireland and ireland it's near to impossible or uh, very rarely a kannada movie gets released and like we we are all eager to watch when uh, uh, is there going to be an announcement of movie screening okay yeah i think i think whether it, we do have a number of whatsapp group probably and then the facebook probably we do announce 
now there, there are people i don't personally do it but uh, the number of small distributors do announce it probably we could we could put that i don't know whether you are in the group probably we could put that information there nagesh okay thank you uh, and few more people are waiting um yeah some on the text also i think uh, i and we i'm chaitra here Yes. Uh, it was a brilliant presentation. Uh, so I am from Karnataka, and I'm very happy to see how my state is progressing here. Uh, I have, uh, like, I think Karnataka tourism is uh, one section where uh, I think it need it it is it has got a lot of scope for improvement. Maybe uh, so. I just wanted to know: is there any uh, initiative from Karnataka government to reach to you know Europe and Ireland? uh so uh, i myself being a great enthusiast uh, for the wildlife we know like we have many karnataka you know government uh, lodges uh, forest lodges etc so is there any initiatives you would like to highlight initiative for how uh, karnataka as a state is promoting tourism is that the yeah, question yeah promoting like across you know europe like i see uh, i have many uh, irish colleagues and i see they always talk about going to thailand or any other part of asia so i think in case of promoting we might we might do little work i guess so is there any initiative to reach to the europe is my question oh got it so you are talking about the publicity and the marketing uh, yeah. about telling the story of each uh, district specifically yes. right yes yes so the state is working on that there are marketing uh, agencies which are actively working now for example brand mysuri something which we are creating so that everyone knows the story of mysore and then uh, there is the desire to come and set up over here uh, over and above that we are also tying up with some um, hotel chains uh, so that they can come up in karnataka and you know they create an whole experience around that so yes that is being worked on we we are aware yeah but thank you for highlighting yeah thanks jan just one more point yeah. please so janvi uh, thanks a lot uh, just one more question i mean you see uh, as we are speaking uh, vibrant gujarat summit is taking place uh, is being held in ahmedabad right with all the leaders yeah. and of course at a scale at a size at a at a pop mm. Of Definitely. Yeah. So is Karnataka government also looking at organizing something of that? If not at that, at least at that scale, but at least you get started on that particular road because that is something which generates a lot of eyeballs. Uh, of course, global leaders come over, uh, big business leaders are there, and of course, it creates a lot of news flash. So right. So totally, totally agreed. So uh, Karnataka held it in uh, November twenty twenty two. Karnataka held its global investor meet, where again this was a three-day event which happened, and you know we got around nine point eight seven lakh crores of investment during that time. Uh, these many MOUs were signed. But uh, again, in future also we are planning to do uh, the time timeline which we are looking at right now is Feb twenty twenty five. So that is when we are again uh, having a massive uh, this uh, global investor meet or the Invest Karnataka forum meet. So, because uh, we had it in twenty twenty two, every year it does not make sense because now whatever leads you get, you have to make sure that they are grounded, and then other investments start coming in. So that is the plan. That is one forum, and the other one is of course the Pravasi Bharati forum. That is also a pretty active forum, which of course a lot of states tap into. So maybe a right, and a uh, tech summit also we keep on have uh, we keep uh, have that annually. So, for example, it just happened last November. that is uh, done by the itbt department so that is again a two day event where all the it companies uh, come and uh, have that event but obviously it's not that level which uh, in <laughs> vibrant gujarat is but yes yeah. and just to facilitate that i think it will be useful by the time 2025 can have the direct flights and ensure that there's more football and direct can can we to ban you that we very helpful as well so all in the direction thank you for that information Only point I would like. Yes. Hi. Good, good morning. Uh, regarding the issue of difficulty faced by Indian nationals, the people of Indian origin in UK, uh, Germany, on transit, etc. I would like to say that MBC has already raised this point with the government authorities in India, and uh, we would like to uh, uh, send another reminder to their attention. Thank you. Thank you. And there are few questions in the chat box. uh hi can you hear me yes hi my name is hari um i work with one of the ev charging company uh, which is the charges 
Well, which we manufacture with the help of Intel and other suppliers from UK here. And we try to connect with Karnataka Udyog Mitra um, from um, kind of a supplier point of view where we want to uh, do a POC, how much it would cost for us in India. Here, okay. costing around uh, a cost for like 500 euro and we are selling for a bit higher price here. Um, and we want to do a POC there. We have the the conformity certificate from uh, you and all of the um, regulatory standards. And we have tested the uh, uh, magnetic field standards as well. What all the certificates we, we want, we can supply. So I was trying to reach out to a person called Praveen Ramdurg, <clears throat> Joint Director, Karnataka Udyog Mitra. Uh, but he was in his intention was for us to manufacture there. But for us, we need to first try to do an assembly of getting a suppliers who all uh, do the kind of a outer aspect of the non-electronics part of the uh, components. And then uh, we try to assemble and see how much it would cost for us so that we get into the market. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know because after that, the person said, oh, no, I'm not the person for that. So I just want to know if you can help me with any contact. Sure, how... Surely, Mr. Ali. So I would request that you send the detailed uh, what kind of a connect you want. So the profile yeah. of the uh, type of connect which you're looking at, uh, we can definitely connect you. So uh, the email ID which I have shared, com Commissioner Industries, you can share it yeah. and we'll reply shortly to that. That, that should yeah. not be an issue at all. Yeah, I might have tried with few KSIC uh, contacts, but uh, I haven't got any replies from uh, KSIDC and KSIC contacts. So I'll try this email. This I haven't got any email um, from. So can you paste that email again, please? I joined from my laptop now. So Sure. And also just keep this email in CC so that. Uh... Yeah, sure. I look. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> no worries. Yeah. A few questions are there in the chat box. Shall we? If you have time. So there is this EV promoting export. We have already answered. Bangalore flight movies. Yeah, I think all the questions in the chat are answered. All right. Fine. So, uh, if there are no more questions, then shall we move on to the concluding session? Uh, may I now request His Excellency Ambassador to uh, give away his concluding remarks on this topic. Um, and from Ambassador's speech, we will drive some uh, action points and follow up for this event. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, first of all, I must compliment January to you for the excellent presentation. Uh, we all felt very proud of Karnataka, our very dear state. Uh, and the tremendous uh, contribution Karnataka and people of Karnataka are making in uh, India's uh, growth story. Uh, personally, I have been a great admirer of uh, Karnataka's contribution in branding of India. Uh, I was a uh, Deputy Consul General uh, in San Francisco and I saw myself how Karnataka story created a brand of India. Uh, uh, like, this, the connect between Silicon Valley and Bangalore uh, was, I think, transformational in changing the mindset of American people. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the story of diversification in not only highway industries, cutting edge industries, aerospace, uh, but new areas like IT and uh, biotech. Karnataka has been a pioneer. So uh, we are very delighted to have this presentation and see, like, very, very inspiring progress of a wonderful state. Uh, and also, I must thank Janvi for her own presentation. Uh, I was so proud of you, Janvi, that uh, you are so con young, but so confident, so thorough in your knowledge. And, and also, your sense of humor as well. You know, the, not all the details at her fingertips and also the way of handling questions, the positive energy she exudes is very, you made us all very proud of India and Indian youth. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mean the Lord. Yeah. yeah. 
second point is uh, uh, i would encourage all friends who are here and also who are connecting uh, through online uh, also who will be share who will be accessing this uh, recording later on uh, that they should feel free to contact embassy uh, and also the government of karnataka i know they are very proactive uh, very very business friendly so instead of making big uh, issues uh, please write to us precisely what kind of assistance is needed and we will definitely try our best to facilitate uh, not only in the government of karnataka but also in any state in india will be happy to facilitate any b to b connect third uh, uh, with regard to the opportunities uh, th there is need for a granular connect a granular assess uh, assessment of uh, yeah. potential opportunities to dovetail uh, because karnataka and, and ireland are uh, have very very interesting complementary complementary strengths uh, and they can be dovetailed so that both sides benefit uh, and that will require patient like smaller group sectoral conversations and if accenture itself can become a bridge uh, because you have, you, you, you have strong presence in india you have strong presence Based here bangalore yeah and also bangalore connect so i think next activity we can do uh, india uh, uh, karnataka and ireland connect to accenture i can certainly facilitate in the that yeah. tech sector yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly you can look at any sector whether like yeah. ev or if it sustainable EV, sustainability sustainability yeah, solar or, the areas yeah, that or can, biotech or, yeah. or medical Med devices tech, yeah. so any sector you feel uh, would be also would in line with accenture's priorities sure. so if you you can facilitate a, can the bridge, a yeah. karnataka yeah. ireland connect sure. and basi will be happy to work with you yeah. so this is one action point i would love sure. to follow up uh, second is uh, tourism Uh, i think uh, we also i think rugraj i think we can start uh, another session of tourism promotion okay. uh, to start let us start with with karnataka yes, uh, so we let us do if you janvi will will uh, reach out to you to get the right and we connect like you uh, in the tourism sector who can make a similar presentation on karnataka tourism and also in right. also involve the private sector players Uh, because uh, uh, if we are able to connect the real players who are de dealing with day to day issues in tourism their feedback could be extremely valuable sure i share connections with tourism department so yes. uh, that can be taken forward from there excellent excellent thank you so much uh, thank, you, yeah. thank you yeah thank you thank you all thank you for your uh, for your time and efforts and uh, i would appreciate all the participants who have raised questions and we have really had a very uh, interesting discussions um, which is an extensive and uh, uh, which have uh, i mean uh, across uh, many different fields not only investment business trade uh, and uh, also with many interesting fields today so thank you so much and um, uh, as ambassador said please uh, write to us so that we will put uh, the both sides in uh, touch with each other and we will share the presentation also so that it will have a, a wider reach out to the uh, people here yes. thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you sir thank you